So how convolution neural network recognizes all the important features of an image even if we rotate that image, distort the image, stretch it or change the background of the same image. Folks, Nitin here and this is the AI University channel. In this video, I'm going to introduce another important layer of convolution neural network called as max pooling. It is very important layer from a spatial invariance perspective. If we want our CNN model to recognize an object in an image correctly, even if that object has its features tilted, distorted, different light composition, textures, etc. I will explain by using an example what am I talking about. So watch this video till the end. If you are new here then consider subscribing to this channel or if you have already subscribed then click on the bell icon to receive the notifications about hottest technologies of 21st century. GitHub link for all the required Jupyter notebooks is given in the description section. Please don't forget to like and share this video. So consider I have this image of parrot. Parrot in this image has some distinctive features like its entire body is green in color but its beak is in red color. Let's rotate this image a bit. Although the orientation of this image has been changed, yet our CNN model should be able to still recognize the parrot. Now let's compress this image a bit. The object in this image which is parrot should still be recognized by our CNN model even though parrot is distorted right here. Consider another scenario where uh, we have different images of parrots as shown on the screen. You will observe that they are present in different positions of the image. They are all looking in uh, different directions as well. Uh, this one is looking in right direction. This one is looking down. These are looking at the left side of the image and in this image uh, this parrot is looking at right. They all have a different background. Texture is also different. Lighting is different. So there are a lot of differences here in these images. So even though uh, we have these differences uh, still our CNN model should recognize the parrot correctly due to its unique features. That is body color green and red beak. It should not be the case that CNN is looking for these features at an exact location or shape or size because then it would not be able to recognize these parrots. Hence our CNN model should possess a property called as a spatial invariance which gives CNN's flexibility to recognize an image features even if the object in image has different lighting, orientation, distortion, background color etc. So now let's see how max pooling works. Max pooling is also referred to as a subsampling or downsampling layer. So let's say we got this feature map after applying convolution uh, plus a ReLU or you know just convolution operation. Now once we get this feature map we apply max pooling on it. The way we do it is first we define a spatial neighborhood uh, which is nothing but 2 pixel by 2 pixel window as shown here. It doesn't have to be uh, necessarily 2 by 2. Uh, and you can choose any size of it. So you place it on top uh, left and take the largest element or value from this feature map within that window and ignore the rest of the three elements or values. In this case it is 5. Now move to the right. Here we have selected the stride of 2 so we should be here. Now repeat the process once again. Capture the largest value from the feature map. Here in this case it is 8. And repeat the same process for this part of the feature map and this part of the feature map. We captured values 9 and 7 respectively. By doing this we are still uh, you know preserving the features. Apparently max pooling helps uh, extracting the sharpest features of an image. So given an image the sharpest features are the best lower level representation of an image. We already know from convolution uh, layer video that uh, these largest values are the places where you find the closest similarity of the features. Let's say our parrot has this red beak which is a feature represented by number 8. Now if I rotate this image to change the orientation, I would get number 8 shifted to this place. Now since its 
the maximum value i would still be able to capture the feature which is a red beak of the parrot so we are still able to preserve the feature by applying max pooling we are reducing the dimensionality of each feature map thereby getting rid of features three out of four pixels which are not that important and hence reducing the size of image in a nutshell we are not only preserving these features introducing spatial invariance but also reducing the size size reduction helps in a uh, faster processing during model training or in other words speeding up the computations also by removing some noise in the data and extracting only significant or important features we can reduce overfitting in this example of max pooling we we were taking a maximum or largest value of the feature map but we do have other types of max pooling as well and those are average and sum let's take an example of average pooling see this image now here we place 2 pixel by 2 pixel window on top left and take the average value of all the four elements from this feature map and in fact within this window so 5 plus 3 plus 2 plus 0 divided by 4 is equals to 2.5 now move to the right here we have selected the stride of 2 so we should be here now repeat the process once again capture the average value from the feature map here in this case it is 4.25 and repeat the same process for this part of the feature map and this part of the feature map so we captured the values uh, 3.5 and 3.75 respectively in case of sum pooling, we just take a sum of values. Max pooling helps in uh, extracting low level features like edges, points, etc. While average pooling identifies smooth features. Now if you want to see how the image looks like after we apply max pooling on image, uh, we got as a part of a ReLU operation, this is how it looks like. You can see that spatial size of the image has reduced now. Max pooling also reduces the number of parameters and computations in the network thereby controlling the overfitting as I mentioned earlier. It also makes the network change less to small distortions, transformations etc. in the input image because we take the maximum or average value of the given feature map. So max pooling is very powerful since we can detect object in an image irrespective of where exactly are they located. So folks, this is it for this video. In the next upcoming videos, I will cover explanation of various other layers of convolution neural network before we develop any image recognition object detection related projects. So here is today's question. What are the three types of pooling operations explained in the video? Please post your answers, comments in the comment section given below so that I can get a chance to incorporate your feedback. You can also post your technical questions in the comment section and I will try to answer the same. If you are watching this video and you are not already a subscriber to our channel, consider clicking that little subscribe button. In case you have already subscribed, then click on the bell icon to receive the notifications whenever I will release a new video. So thanks for hanging out with me guys. I will be covering next topic in the upcoming video. So keep on watching. Thank you.